Welcome to SoCal Cyclist Podcast, episode number 40, the podcast that brings you the people and practice of the Peloton. Man, I can't believe it's the 40th episode already. It feels like just yesterday uh, we started to record, or rather I started to record and then and then got fooled people enough to uh, get them on board to talk with me. But with me today co-hosting is Adam. How are you doing today, Adam? I'm doing good. You? Good. I... Uh, I don't know. You're not a cyclist. You're not a you're not a bike racer per se. Although you've done like triathlons and mountain biking and stuff, but you're 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 a good source for what's going on outside of the world of cycling, which is good because we need that. Yeah, hopefully I can bring some sort of uh, perspective and maybe some questions for the per, you know you guys who are cyclists. You know, give you a perspective of what we see of you guys from the outside and maybe. Uh I don't know. Yeah, no, it's good because cycling is can definitely be a bubble. And I think, you know, if you live too long in that bubble, it gets harder to see other points of view. So if you're that cyclist on the road that expects traffic to bow down to you all the time, which <laughs> yeah, would yeah. would be nice in a perfect world. Unfortunately, that doesn't happen, but you know, you provide the perspective, I think. <clears throat> yeah, so what I hope to do, you know, I, I was thinking about it and it's like some some small town girl goes to Hollywood and becomes famous. She's always got her family to keep her grounded <laughs> yeah. because, you know, you don't want it to go to their heads too much. So anyway, you're that for me because you've known me as I was, as I am a cyclist before I was a cyclist when I was on break. Yeah. Uh, so you've kind of seen me uh, in all aspects, which is good. So I need... Uh, you to provide the listeners with that kind of uh, perspective and you're you're not like against cyclists either like you no not at all but it is interesting for me to ask be able to ask you questions and get answers and then you know hear your perspective and then me go well that might seem selfish or this or that or why is it like that why so, do we shave our legs yeah yeah not like that it. one i get that one <laughs> <laughs> we'll get to that one later but let's go ahead and get to listener mail and today we've got um, a little bit of an older one, but it checks out uh, from, go ahead, take it away. So this is from Seth, and I'm going to read it right now. Every now and again, someone comes up with a great idea to help promote cycling in SoCal. These ideas, ideas usually founder because they are A, unprofitable, B, unprofitable, mm. and C, extremely difficult to maintain. Although it's too early to pro- proclaim it a financial success, Brian Coe has started an ambitious podcast project at SoCalCyclist.org. This fills a huge void for news and quality information about what's going on in the SoCal bicycling, bicycling world. Well, thanks, Seth. I appreciate it. And uh, Seth, of course, was on one of the earlier episodes, episode 19, and a very popular episode as he has a big influence in L.A. Uh, he's a bike lawyer as well as a blogger, as well as uh, he's contributed to uh, prize money for local races, which, mm-hmm. man, I, that, that's just amazing that he does that because, you know, so he hit it on the first two points, unprofitable unprofitable in fact not only unprofitable but negative oh yeah (laughs) because there's some days i'm losing money on this but i digress anyway so thank you seth the rest of you uh keep writing in it's super important uh you can do leave a review on itunes or you can leave a review on any social media site uh and i will try and uh, get it out there you can reach me at socal underscore cyclist on instagram twitter facebook is socal cyclist and then um itunes same name so let's go ahead and get into gear guide and we've got a great one today in scratch labs so adam what do you know about Scratch Labs? I mean, is it is it is it a is it a term known outside of cycling, or is it pretty much just a cycling? Well, you know, we we always talk about my background, which was in motocross. That was you know the sport that I took part in when I was growing up and as in my twenties. Um, and so I know that within the sport of motocross, these are the types of things that motocross racers use to you know, replenish them, you know, uh, replenish their and hydrate themselves after a long race. And it is something that's gaining traction in the motocross world. No pun uh, intended, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah, so, um, and uh, do you wanna talk about, the, about Alan? Or? Yeah, so let's, so Scratch Labs, which has also 
sponsored motocross mm-hmm. among NASCAR yep. Yep. And, and many other sports, not just cycling. They're really big into rock climbing as well. Um, basically anything outdoors has been known for creating hydration products, but uh, they've started to get into just a their latest product, which is um, endurance recovery mix. And so we've got some for us to try today for Gear Guide, and uh, it is vanilla flavored endurance recovery mix. Now, both Adam and I have not tried this, so we'll be trying this for the first time. For you listeners at home, uh, we got to shake it up. And then we'll sample some. So Adam, go ahead and start doing that. And then uh, let's start drinking it. This is, it comes in uh, three different flavors. It comes with uh, chocolate, coffee, and then vanilla. We've got the uh, vanilla mix on hand. Oh, that's plenty. Thank you. (laughs) (laughs) He's pouring it right now as we speak. And and it basically looks like a big old glass Glass of of milk. milk. But uh, yeah, we we pre-shook it up. Uh, cheers. Cheers. Prost. All right. Oh, that's it's good. good. <laughs> yeah, that's good. It I was, tastes. I was a little worried. <laughs> <laughs> and I have to admit, I'm biased because I've been a supporter of Scratch for a very long time. So nothing I say here will be, you know, impartial. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like I love Scratch. I love everything they do. Uh, you know. And this is another great product. It's so good. I have to take another swig off of it. It's so good. It's sweet. Um, I think it's exactly what somebody craves after a long run or long bike ride. Um, and you know, it's sweet, but it's, it's actually, I was thinking it would be kind of clumpy. Mm-hmm. But it's not at all clumpy. It actually just tastes maybe a little bit thicker than water would. Yeah, and we're drinking it with water, although you can use it with, I'm sure, milk or soy milk or rice milk. Um, but, you know, a little bit of water, and it tastes totally great. It comes in a 1.3-pound bag, so that's 600 grams. Uh, and these bags have the distinct, you know, scratch logo with the pixels on the back. Do you want to tell us about some of the nutritional information? Um, so... Per serving, it's 3.5 grams of uh, fat, uh, saturated fat 2.5 grams, trans fat 0 grams, cholesterol 15, sodium 270 milligrams, and carbohydrates 36 grams, dietary fiber, none, none of that, sugars 34 grams. Okay, and so everything a growing boy or girl needs. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and I'm sure it goes great, you know, like when you're on the bike or on running, you know, you're, you're filling yourself up with uh, Scratch Labs hydration, uh, you know, and now they've kind of entered into the recovery, which is a, such an essential part that a lot of people tend to forget uh, when it comes to uh, their workout. You know, they think once their workout's done, it's done, but it's not. You, you have to recover, uh, sleep hard, all, all those sort of uh, those uh, cliches that sometimes work hard, sleep hard, play hard, all those things. But yeah, check it out, scratchlabs.com. Uh, and look for a review on this on Gear Guide on the website socalcyclist.org, uh, and then also I'm, I should have said this at the top of the show, but from now on we're actually recording uh, our intros for episodes, and then those recordings on will be put on YouTube. Uh, as well as the website, uh, and I have a YouTube channel as well, SoCal Cyclist, um, so you can find those. So my YouTube uh, watchers, I, haven't, I usually put out race videos. Uh, you can find all these gear guide reviews, so video reviews, as well as the written reviews. So hopefully, uh, if you're too lazy to listen, you can read, and if you're too lazy to read, you can watch. It's basically going to hit people as many different ways as we can get it. So Adam, what's your take on the recovery mix? Would you... I would absolutely recommend it. And like I said, probably a little bit biased because I do know Alan, but it, it tastes really good. And the, I think the aspect that I really like the most is it's not thick. It's, it's, it goes down really nice and it feels yeah. like something you could almost drink while on a ride. Yeah. And not just for recovery. So. And, and, and the thing is, yeah, you're right. Like it, do, it doesn't, it's not super clumpy. In fact, you know, we're looking at the uh, glass. It's not leaving a whole lot of residue on the glass. You can you can tell, um, and it's not one of those ones you constant. It constantly settles, and you have to reshake and settles and reshakes. Mm-hmm. Uh, it tastes great. Maybe I'll put it on some ice cream or something. Makes right. makes a good topping. <laughs> yeah, it's really sweet. Too. 
Super good. And that is a great segue, Adam, into um, our guest for today's show, uh, Alan Lim, who is, I would say, the guest I know the best. Um, He's known me since birth, (laughs) and he knows everything about me, and I've known him since I was born, obviously. And uh, when when did you first hang out with uh, Alan? I think it was at your 30th birthday party. Alan came down for that, and we we all went down to San Diego to some club. You rented out some things. Oh, my some, God. Some, remember that? The Upper Deck. Let's not talk yeah. about those days. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> that's where I met Alan. So we had dinner before that, and I got to talk to Alan. And then after that, and then uh, I think we had spent Christmas dinner together later on mm-hmm. and at your wedding. Where, yeah. yeah, he married me. He's a minister. Not a lot of people know that. But they do know. He he's a, he's lots a, of talents. Yeah, he, he's a man of many talents. So you knew him pre Scratch Labs um, while he was, you know, I think working on his PhD. Uh, but Dr. Alan Lima, as I should say, is um, basically one of the biggest influencers within the sport of cycling. He's uh, written books. He's given TED talks. Uh, He's worked with many professional athletes. He started his own hydration company, Scratch Labs, which is doing really, really well. They're coming up on their five-year anniversary. And those guys and girls in Boulder, they work super duper hard at everything they do. And um, they make it look effortless. And I remember when you were telling me what Alan was going to do, you were like, hey, Adam, this is top secret stuff. <laughs> Alan is going to start start his own hydration company or you know food company. That's yeah. The, the- and at the time, it was called Secret Drink Mix, SDM. Like, th- there wasn't even a name for it because the pro cyclists in the Peloton had contracts for their own yeah. hydration, which was crap. And then they were <laughs> refilling their water bottles with the Secret Drink Mix. And they just ha- they just did it because yeah. it worked yeah. and it was effective. So um, yeah, that's it's cool how you got to see like the evolution go from A to B to C, which is really great. So um, I am very excited, very proud actually to have Alan um, as a guest on the show. Um, he provides a different perspective than uh, your typical you know top athlete. Um, but yeah, his mind works 100 miles an hour, and I was just trying to keep up. So with that said, let's go ahead and get into episode number 40 with Alan Lim. <laughs> 